Okay, I'm here with Jill Levine. Who's Suzanne Jill Levine. Suzanne Jill Levine. Um, and we're going to be talking about translation. Um, she's doing our latest book by Guadalupe Nettle. And, uh, and yeah, welcome. Thanks Thank for coming by the office. Thank you. So I was wondering, how did you get into translation in the first place? Oh my God, that's a long story. <laughs> Guadalupe Natel. You know, it's interesting because I thought her name was Natel. That's how it's pronounced in Spanish, but I see we call her Nettle in English. I don't know. Um, so how, you, you can cut, or this other can cut. No. Yeah. Yeah, we can. <laughs> it can be done. Um, well, I was very young, and it was the era of the boom. And um, um, I knew Gregor Rabassa. He was one of my teachers at Columbia University, and um, uh, I'd always been interested in, in translation since, I guess, high school, because I was very into languages. I learned French first, and then I learned Spanish in, in, in um, uh, college, and then I spent a year in Spain, and that was, of course, you know, I fell madly in love with Spain. It was an amazing country, and the language, and everything, you know, literature, and then when I came back and graduated from college, um, um, I was going to graduate school at Columbia, but I was really, I didn't really want to be at school, I wanted to be writing, and, uh, and translation appealed to me a lot, translation literature, since it seemed to be a way to become a writer, it was a, you know, translation was um, like a, a great step to take toward becoming a writer. Um, and um, also I was intrigued by, by the literature and uh, particularly intrigued by uh, translating the spoken voice. That always seemed to me very interesting. You know, how would I bring alive um, literature or that was so lively uh, and so um, you know, humorous and satirical and wonderful uh, and full of nuances? Uh, how would you take that language that's so alive and then somehow make it alive in English? That, that sort of intrigued me. So, so I became a translator, and I, uh, my first project was with a very great writer from Cuba, Guillermo Caber Infante, and we worked together, and it was an amazing project. And then from there, I went on to Manuel Puig, who's a famous Argentine writer, and, and translated several of his books. I translated several books of both of them, and, um, and I ended up writing a biography of Manuel Puig, which uh, was published by Ferrara Strauss and Giroux, and it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's quite a book. It's, Speaking of lively, there's a lot going on there. <laughs> hmm. um, that's interesting. You mentioned Rabassa. I just got yeah. a book of his, If This Be Treason, oh, on, yes. you know, that one on translation questions. Yes. Um, yes. And I guess the debate continues to rage about literalism in translation versus yeah. sort of trying to capture more a writer's Right. Essence, right. or however you want to put it. I was wondering where do you, where, where would you I, say you fall on that spectrum? Well, I mean, I'm sure he falls in, in the essence one. Mm -hmm. I, I know, I knew him well, um, which is the same one that Saint Jerome fell in. You know, his basically sense. We want to capture the spirit, the sense, uh, as opposed to well, not as opposed to, but in other words, if you're just capturing the word and not the sense, then it's not going to serve. It's not going to reach its, its, uh, its readers. It's not going to um, convert uh, the faithful, etc. Um, in the case of Saint Jerome, of course, it was the Bible. Yeah, I mean, many people have now written memoirs of translation. I mean, I, I actually uh, was, one, was the first of this, of this generation, uh, including Rabassa, because I came out with a book called The Subversive Scribe way back in uh, 1990. Uh, about translating Latin American fiction, which was a very detailed um, meditation uh, reflection uh, 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 into the um, into the process of translating uh, with Caber and Fonzi and Puig translating their their novels, and uh, also another really experimental writer, uh, Severo Sardui from Cuba. So, um, and um, you know, um, I think that um, you know. Every text produces its um, its rules. There's no one rule. There's no one way of translating, and I think that's one of the things that uh, my book shows. And um, uh, you know, the, so 
people can theorize all they want, but they're going to try to do the best possible job. In translation, you know, um, for example, uh, uh, Lawrence Venuti, who's a big um, theoretician, uh, uh, translation, also a friend of mine from way back, and who was uh, quite influenced by my book initially, and he, of course, has done a lot about. Uh, the idea of foreignizing, you know, foreignizing that that's an important uh, uh, aspect, you know, not to appropriate the other culture, but to let it show itself, you know. Oops, somebody's calling. Uh, <laughs> so uh, let, it, let it come through. And yes, of course, it has to come through, uh, but there are ways of doing it. And uh, he, he speaks of foreignizing, but his, his actual translations are very fluent. So... Um, um, it's it's a it's a balancing act translation. What was the name of your book again? Uh, the Subversive Scribe, oh, God. translating Latin American fiction, and it was first trans it was first published by Gray Wolf, and then uh, Dalkey just recently reissued it. Okay. Yeah. We'll have to look for that. Um, pretty fun. <laughs> and so, what drew you to Guadalupe Natal? Well, Dan Simon. <laughs> <laughs> Dan Simon approached me one day with this uh, with this project, and uh, I said, "Okay, it looks interesting. It doesn't look too long. I'm I'm sort of on the lazy side, so I don't like to do books that are too long lately. Um, I, thought, I think I've done my share of that kind of thing." And um, um, I just started, you know, I said, "It looks interesting." Um, you know, I I was intrigued. I then I started working with the stories, and I was, you know. I mean, uh, I was totally taken in. I mean, she's so <laughs> she's so marvelously quirky and eccentric and funny, but in a very perverse way. Uh, and uh, I, I kind of like that uh, that sort of uh, curious uh, perverseness of her stories, um, mm. which uh, it's, it's sort of birth. It's 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 both earnest and perverse at the same time. Mm. <laughs> um, and. Um, some of the stories are quite, um, quite wild. Um, uh, we were just talking about one of them, the, the one called Flower Petals. Um, the first story, actually, for her, is very self-reflective because it speaks, I mean, each story seems to speak of some obsession or problem the character has, and it's slightly on the edge of, you know, illness, but not quite. Um, and uh, so it's 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 fascinating um, uh, the whole this uh, this this whole book of stories that somatic that's so somatic you know it's about the body but it's really about something much broader and um, I think I must have bored somebody or they couldn't focus on their work so. <laughs> no I don't think so <laughs> so anyway but so anyway but I find the stories very um, appealing. Uh, uh, um, just it's sort of a fun world or fun characters to be with, and um, and I also identify with a lot. I identify a lot with her with her writing. I actually feel that um, she's a woman writing from, in some ways, a very sub subaltern point of view or certainly oblique point of view, and uh, expressing issues that are uh, maybe almost invisible sometimes to men, but. Um, and I like that, the way she does that, uh, and, and I identify with some of the, some of the feelings, characters, uh, issues that she brings up. Mm. So I don't want to, I don't want to spoil the, you know, spoil it for the reader, so I won't bring up specifics. Okay. And we're <laughs> talking about. But it's darn funny. <laughs> and we're talking about Petalos by Guadalupe Nettel, which will be translated, I believe, as Petals, right? Well, yeah, well, actually, but we're, and we're going to call, I think we're going to call the book Bezoar. Oh, okay. Bezoar. Thank you for correcting me. Bezoar, which is another obsessive thing, which is another kind of obsessive um, uh, story about an obsession. Uh, and um, it's called Bezoar and Other Unsettling Stories. Okay. Yeah, which is pretty literally what she calls it, except we chose a different story to be at the head of the, uh, to be on the title page. Okay. Yeah. And lastly, you also translated that book I see right there on your left, oh, Lindo Cruel by Luis Negron. The wonderful, the delightful Luis Negron. That yeah. was 
a, this was a great discovery, and it's the first time I worked with Dan, and uh, I think that's partly because it was such a fun project that I was was very eager to work with Dan again. I mean, he has good taste in literature, I think. <laughs> and um, yeah, this was an amazing discovery because um, uh, there was a young man working here uh, before you, uh, before probably several people now, it's been a while, um, uh, Gabriel, who was, um, I think, Dominican, uh, but he knew, he knew Luis and knew of his work, and he was very enthusiastic, and he wrote to me. I don't, he didn't even know who I was, you know, just some translator out there, <laughs> and said, are you interested? And I said, well, I'll take a look at it. And at first I was kind of appalled. I said, wow, this stuff is practically pre-literary. And then I realized that's what they said about Manuel Puig's first novel, La Traición de Rita Hayworth. And he's very, he's almost like um, a reincarnation in some ways of Manuel Puig with the way he deals with spoken language and gay culture, uh, and a great deal of compassion and humor. And... Um, and uh, you know, it's in a very particular wor world, which is uh, Santurce in Puerto Rico, um, and um, so yeah, I, this was a book that was just perfect for me because it's all spoken language, which I of course adore to work with because I'm kind of a, a frustrated actress. So you know, I love I love to I love to do dialogue. I love to do monologues. It's it's really fun stuff. So uh, and I've gone around entertaining. You know, I've taken the show on the road. <laughs> And people really laugh. They really like the stuff. <laughs> so, but it's it's just wonderful. It's wonderful writing. Very fresh, and and uh, certainly he's a, he's an important writer, important new writer in, 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 in Puerto Rico. Okay. Yeah. Well, great. Um, Thank you very much for sitting down with me. You're this welcome. This has been Suzanne Levine yeah. in the Seven Stories Press offices. Well, pleasure, Noah. <laughs> okay. <laughs>